。对于我们来说的话，因为主场在中国，观众给我们的欢呼声肯定会更大，我们会会更有动力。但其实如果输了比赛的话，我们压力会也会更大，而且想要在中国留下一个冠军。You know, this is it. This is what everyone works for, like as a pro player, is to play at Worlds and just play against the best and prove yourself as one of the best. 第三次来到世界赛，然后我觉得我自己跟第一次比起来已经成熟很多，就是无论在一些 call 的决断上跟一些操作方面，我都觉得比 S5 第一次来世界赛的时候好很多。At MSI, TSM split games with Flash Wolves, and now I'm on the team, and I think we're a lot better. So, yeah, I guess we'll see if I can back it up. Yesterday's loss against Gam wasn't as maybe heartbreaking as other losses might be. I feel like this will only be a one-time thing. Yeah, I'm glad I'm still here. When we play in the group, when we play against SKT, at first we feel it's a little bit difficult because every year we play against SKT, it's very strong. Yeah, I don't have any feelings like that. But I feel well and comfortable. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Wuhan, China, for more battles in the 2017 World's Group Stage. We're ready for an action-filled day as the teams in Group D get ready to step on stage. Here, of course, you see all of the fans that have packed the arena today to watch our six games that'll take place. Plenty of fandom for the Chinese teams, of course, but we even heard some TSM chants earlier today, some scenic views of the beautiful Wuhan, China, which is playing host to us the next couple of weeks. It's been a fabulous day in the city so far. Look forward to the rest of the days remaining here for us. Of course, our international partners are also joining us. We've got China and Brazil here to cover and send it out to the rest of the world. Hello, and I'm James Dash Patterson here with Zach, Rusty Pie, Alberto Crumbs, Rangifo, and Joshua Jatt. These been gentlemen, big day of games yesterday. We had a couple upsets, a couple surprises, but overall, very exciting. Are you guys ready for day two? So ready, just so ready. The Arden sensor at first is a little disheartening, but then it just got blown right out of the water. We got to see everybody break the meta that really matter. Gem, the GAM, as well as Longju. Absolutely, those guys are rock stars. We're gonna see the rest of the teams play out today. We've got our first view of the group stage yesterday with reigning champions SKT and AHQ Esports pulling ahead in Group A. Over in Group B, Longju Gaming and the GPL's Gigabyte Marines hold the lead, while Samsung and home favorites RNG picked up their first wins in Group C. Now, it was a triumphant start for the LCK teams yesterday as Longju and SKT Samsung seem to have full control over their competition. Yeah, a 3-0 start from the Korean sides. No one's surprised, honestly, that they were 3-0, but to a degree, there might be some surprise for the Korean rosters, as ultimately, they started so well. So the one surprise for me was actually Longju's bottom lane. We expected this team to have some falters in their rookies, but to Gorilla admit that has nerves in the bottom lane, had a real rough start, 0 for on Karma, but eventually, they brought it back. Exactly, they bounced back in a big way. You can see them inside the base winning the game before 28 minutes so yes it was a slight rough start but we've seen way rougher starts from korea we've seen yeah. them drop games multiple games before this was one of the best starts they've had right so the 3-0 start for korea that's going to feel nice for them the teams in the lck they found their form it was a tougher start for the NALCS and the ULCS teams, a combined 0 and 4 for these Western squads. Yeah, and it's one day of group stage of eight. And I feel like specifically for the North American teams, both having to play up against the Korean teams in their group on day one, that's not the best schedule draw or representation of their skills. So I actually think North American go 3-0 today based on the schedule getting easier for them. I think it's a real possibility. All right, well, very big call. <laughs> that's a very big call. Of course, G2, someone else we have to quickly talk about. They played against the other Korean team, which is the unfortunate start for both EU and NA, but they pulled out the Ivan, and what I'm liking from all the teams, even though they lost from the West, is sticking to strategies. Right, well, half of the West of NA can do well, but Fnatic was the one that was up against the Gigabyte Marines, and sure, they felt like maybe their preparation was not quite as well, that maybe that loss was not going to be as hard as it could have been, not as hardening, but there wasn't much for Fnatic to 
feel good about themselves for that one. So this day one will be today. Absolutely. Our surprise team from MSI, the Gigabyte Marines, they took down Fnatic in that first game and looked to leave their mark on World's 27th day in one way or another. Yeah, and as surprised as Fnatic felt against this, it was a slight tweak to a strategy we saw a lot of at MSI. They lane swapped at their last major international event against NA and EU opponents. So they played it better this time. This was an evolution of the strategy because they had late game insurance and Arden Sensor and Power Trist, but they just actually executed very well in the early game. And the execution was coupled by tremendous preparation, looking at the draft, expecting what Fnatic would go with this Arden Tensor meta, knowing how to play around their jungler, specifically Levi, always a carry for this team. And so when they're up against Longju today, I think that they have a lot more to bring to the table. All right, well, today it's time for the teams in Group D to start their road to the quarterfinals, kicking things off with the clash between TSM and the Flash Wolves. From there, Misfits Gaming, they're going to make their international debut against Team WE before the teams in Group B and a step back on stage. And of course, it means that a Western team's got to get a victory today, Dash in game number three when Immortals play against Fnatic. If nothing else, <laughs> that's exciting for the West. Take it when you can. Yeah, guaranteed victory for NA or EU. And I do want to elaborate a little bit on my claim that North America is going to go 3-0 today mm -hmm. because what I saw from them yesterday was them sticking to their domestic style and being confident in doing so. For Immortals, it actually worked against Longju by getting four deaths onto Gorilla early on in the game. For Cloud9, it didn't work, but it has worked so many times for them in the past. Faker is not going to be on every opponent team. I feel like it is much easier to camp mids in the rest of the group or at least generate pressure through that area of the map. So I, from what I saw in the losses, I'm still pretty confident about their ability to win today. Yeah, the region style seems to be there from NA, and I agree with that. Of course, TSM, the one team we haven't seen, so the 3-0 still may be up in the air for that one, but I agree from what we've seen of NA and some of EU, maybe not Fnatic. Uh, they have looked like they've been able to keep that style on the world stage. Well, either way, it's about time for us to get into the game, so we've got Pastry, Kobe, and Vidius ready for our first game. And as we head over, Bjergsen tells us how Worlds has been a year-long process for TSM. I think uh, during the split, a big meme that came up was like, oh, TSM is just practicing for Worlds, but that was a real thing, not just playing what was going to net us wins, but actually playing what might be meta by the time Worlds comes around, and we have to be able to play comps that we're uncomfortable playing or we're not used to playing or just doesn't play to our strengths at all. And that combined with always working on the root problems rather than, you know, the short-term fix that's going to net us wins. I think we had a lot of grueling conversations within the team, even when we were winning, because we noticed small things that just have to be better. And it's very stressful in a team environment, but we recognized that throughout the entire split, it was like, it's not about winning NA, it's about going to Worlds and doing well. So I think our mindset this year has been a lot better for that. Thank you, Dash. I am Julian, Patriot Time Card, joined by Sam, Kobe Hartman, Kenzel, and Andrew Vedius Day. Kobe, good to have you here. And Vedius, congratulations. It's the first time you'll ever get to cast with me. You are welcome. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Pastry what has decided to honor bless it you. Is. In all seriousness, the stage is set for the first game of the day between two of our summer champions, TSM from the NALCS and MSI semi finalist Flash Rules. With that, let's take a look at our competitors starting on the blue side with Flash Wolves. In the top lane, soon enough. It is MMD in the jungle. There's Casa, mid laner Maple, ADC Betty, support Soda, and their coach Stake. And their opponents are going to be Team Solo mid, playing on the red side in this game. Up top is Hauntzer. In the jungle, Sven Skarin, mid Bjergsen, AD Carry double lift, support Bio Frost, and coach Parth on stage. And like the Flash Wolves, TSM have dominated their region over the last years, winning the 2017 Summer Finals against the Mortals. And it's the big rematch from the game at MSI that knocked TSM out of the tournament. I think that many fans will remember that final decider tiebreaker where Flash Wolves were able to come up big and were able to take that win. And I'm sure TSM are looking to get a bit of revenge. Definitely true. And TSM, there is a lot of hype around the team coming to Worlds. You know, talking about Summer, you know, talking about all of the interviews that have come out of the boot camp around Korea, uh, they definitely are very high expectations for this team, especially since this time around, you know, TSM have avoided getting a Korean team in their group. However, you know, Flash Wolves, slightly lower expectations and slightly lower hype for the team coming this year since summer wasn't that great for the LMS. However, 
Just recently, since we got here, we were talking to a lot of the players, and in the last two weeks, you know, the boot camp here apparently was extraordinarily good for Flash Wolves, and so even TSM members uh, are giving a lot of respect to these guys. This might be, you know, the most difficult opponent for them in the group right now. Flash Wolves definitely looking good at the moment. It definitely feels like, based on what we've heard from some of the teams and players, that it could be these two teams fighting for the top of Group B, and that just makes it all the more exciting, given that when you look at Flash Wolves and how they perform domestically, it was very easy to see the gap between them and AHQ, and everyone was like, how well will they really be able to perform on the international stage? But this is a team that has that tendency to always show up when they really need it. And let's go over the stars here for Flash Wolves that people will remember, because one of the things in their favor is definitely these legacy players. I mean, they have a lot of experience. Carsa and Maple were always the guys everyone pointed to. That mid lane and jungle synergy is something that could very well return for them. In addition, Sword Art, you no know, big shot caller, big playmaker from support. We'll see how he adapts to the Ardent Sensor meta. And the thing is, during the regular season, the Flash Wolves did struggle, especially around in that mid-jungle duo. And Sword Art, he was responsible for, for a lot of their success. He really had to step up. As you said, he became this big shot caller, this big playmaker. And it's exciting to see how, throughout the regular season, especially around playoffs, all of these superstars really came into their own. And I think on their opponent's side for TSM, we can see pretty similar parallels. Well. That is... Incredible, actually, juggling the hand warmers. Clearly feeling good before the game is started. But again, strong mid-jungle synergy and strong play from Biofrost TSM support very recently kind of moving into this uh, into world. So I think a lot of hype behind these two teams. Certainly disappointment from both of these teams at the last Worlds as well. So we heard it from Bjergsen team looking to improve, but Flash Wolves, they're going to come out guns blazing as well. Right, and the other thing we heard from Bjergsen, this team is always eyes on worlds. Their goals throughout the entire regular split is always practicing towards international competition. Because they have dominated uh, North America so often, it's always about coming to Worlds, you know, having a good performance here on this big stage. And there are high expectations on this group for them. Like we already talked about many people seeing this as the group of life for TSM, but I feel like that over the last few weeks and how the meta's been developing, every team in this group sees this as the group of life and there's the possibility for a lot of exciting upsets. And all of that could start today with this really exciting matchup. I think the most important thing to remember is this is the first time we will see these two teams for Worlds. Remember, two very strong teams. And I think if we are expecting them to be very competitive versus each other and vie for those top two spots, winning this first game not only sets your Worlds campaign in motion and starts off on a good foot, but beats an opponent you're probably expecting to struggle against as the tournament moves on. Yeah, these very well could be, you know, as we talked about, the top two in the group. Uh, Team WE also in the group. They looked a little bit weaker in plans, but also have been improving into the boot camp. So uh, you can't trust too much with all the boot camp talk and scrims and stuff. That's why we're so excited to finally get our actual test here on stage and see how they have adapted to this meta. Because as Bjergsen talked about, they practice a lot of things that could be very useful here, as we've seen so far at Worlds. Well, let's see what the preparation has brought these two teams. Flash rolls on the blue side as we kick in the champions like TSM over on the red. Cogmore and Jarvan, the first two bands for Flash Rules, and two marksmen on the TSM side, Kalista and Ezreal. Kalista continuing her trend of being banned all the time. Now, what we saw from some of the European teams yesterday was banning away these big Ardent Sensor supports. Those are going to be left available, along with the Sejuani, which is another big band that right now is still available for both sides. Sejuani as well as the Galio. And Galio, even after some nerfs, you know, has very, been very instrumental in a lot of teams dynamic play here and a lot of the objective control that is something as well that you know tsm have put some more time into so very well could be the case i mean you kind of want to get one of these three right galio cho'gath or maokai tanks on the field that in addition to an ardent sensor is usually how you craft the more stable compositions also gragas on top of that even though he did have a few nerfs here or there still considered a very strong jungler but it looks like flash rolls they know what their priorities are yep zaya ban for flash rolls rise on the tsm side and that means sejuani surprise surprise is our first pick on the blue side so you've already got a really strong engage from the side of flash rolls casa he's not going to be bringing out that old insane invade jungle grave style of play he said he's going to be going more for the front line more for the tankiness and just be that initiate for the Flash Wolves later into the game. And Sejuani is one of the highest, you know, uh, pick band champions that we have at the entire tournament. And it was given up for these two bands, the Rise and the Ezreal, last two bands from TSM, targeting that Maple and Karsa combination, uh, two of the champions that have emerged as really aggressive early combinations that you can get off. 
plus with split pushing options later. Uh, so TSM looks like the way they wanted to get those out of the way and then go kind of toe the line here for the meta. There's your Gragas Vedius, and they've got one of the premier Ardent Sensor users. Some people prefer Janna, some people prefer Lulu. Uh, it looks like it will be the Lulu here for TSM. Now it's interesting here that Flash Wolves would choose to prioritize the Varus over the Tristana because typically you'd expect something like a Tristana Janna lane to be picked up from the side of the Flash Wolves, but they were expecting TSM to then go for the Varus Lulu bot lane, which right now is considered very strong, especially when you go for things like the Thunderlords on the Lulu as well to give you a bit of extra laning power. It does look like Flash Wolves don't want to give up, you know, too much early momentum here grabbing that Varus as early as possible. One of the reasons also why Varus, you know, is super popular right now, in addition to strong laning phase, is the fact that he has that passive for tank busting. You know, anywhere that you have max percent HP is really good in the meta right now because a lot of the team compositions are built to work their way through tanks, then to the, you know, threats behind. Now the only big pick that I'm looking at moving into the second half of the draft is Syntra. Both these mid laners love the champion, very comfortable for both sides, and it's a big playmaker to set up both mid laners to allow their junglers to come in and get. Well, as we have moved into phase two of bands, a quick recap. Tarek for a tanky Utten tends to use on the flash roll side, and the expected Triss there for double lift. Galio is the next band here for TSM, taking that away again, likely from Maple, but we have seen at top, and both these mid laners very proficient, very good, and will share a ton of powerful champions like the Syntra you mentioned as well, Vidius. Yeah, I actually am a big fan of the Sejuani and Tarek combination. Uh, Sejuani can try and start off the engagement, and then Tarek with the ultimate buys a lot of time for both melee champions to try and stack up the passives for Sejuani, you know, and try and get a couple more of those procs, uh, really working with that synergy. We do have a lot of solo lane picks here left up, though. Looks like for now, uh, it is going to be some of the bullies in the top side as Flash Wolves decide to target Hauntzer here. Uh, with that Jace. Now bear in mind, Trogath and Maokai both still available, both very blind pickable as well. And that seems like a bit of a, another respect man going over towards Maple. Yeah, Maple has used Vladimir very effectively in the past, and it's a huge team fighting champion. Uh, very good to scale into later. Pretty good with Tarek, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Diving into the back lines. Flash rolls though, one ban left here in phase number two. And TSM, of course, will get their pick of the litter as we come out of this phase. So Flash Wolves, where are you going with this final ban? Cassidyn taking a solo lane champion away from Bjergsen. Now they're definitely looking at a Corky right now for Maple. It's one of his most played during the regular season. He only played it during the playoff final. And with the Cassidyn ban, it's basically saying, OK, that's one of the counters. We know what we're going for. Talia also an option here if they wanted to try and get some of that roaming gameplay through. But the Syndra does go a bit of TSM this time around. That does somewhat block the likes of Koki and Talia. So I think Bjergsen taking the proactive pick and Flash Rules will not have a chance to respond. Always a little terrifying to see Bjergsen get his Syndra. This man is undefeated during the regular season on the champion. He's one of the best performing Syndra players that we have here at the World Championship. And it's just such a big comfort pick for him, and it's one of the champions that he made a name for himself all the way back when he first came on this. And in addition to Bjergsen's you know, specialization on this champion, it's also extremely good when we're having team fights like we talked about. A lot of teams setting up for these five on fives where you have to work through the tanks. And Syndra, good Syndra players have been able to land these stuns through tanks into the back line. And any time, even if you stun the uh, you know back line of the enemy team and you don't go for the kill on them, if you're stunning them and CCing them, you're just delaying their damage and that buys time for you to win basically the tank health war, uh, which has been very important. Well, we have a Trogath there, and we're kind of expecting maybe a Makai as Biofrost having some fun with the crowd, flashing the likes of Garen, but it will be now locked in for Haunts to kind of solidify that front line. So they're giving a power advantage in terms of the laning phase up in the top lane and down in the bottom lane for TSM. So Sven Skarin, he has a few options of where he wants to play around the map, but it feels like this game, they have so many lanes to play around. You also have the Syndra set up in the mid lane. Like, they're looking potentially for a couple of early game plays with the composition they draft. Definitely is a lot of crowd control for the Flash Wolves on the bottom side, post to level six. TSM might have to worry about that one as well. I really do like this top lane matchup, though, uh, with the Nar into Cho'Gath. There are definitely possibilities of trying to put, you know, top lane focus. We keep talking about bottom lane, bottom lane, bottom lane. 
Um, but that is definitely one as well, where if you can get the Gnar that lead against the Cho'Gath uh, and get a Cho'Gath behind, he does become a pretty easy prey if you can get Frozen Mount slows down. But it's one of the interesting things too, where in the early games, Sejuani has a surprisingly large amount of burst, and you have a lot of CC with the Cho'Gath. So when he's in that mini Gnar form, he overextends ever so slightly, and then you have this double tank gank top, and you can very quickly turn that matchup in your favor. So I'd like to see Horns also respect the possibility of an early gank from Caster in the top. Side. I think it's kind of fun to watch these top laners because both Nut and Choga kind of have this identity of they can really take over a game and a lane, but they are very vulnerable if ganked at the right times. I mean, Nah changes forms back and forth, and one of them is very difficult to gank, and the other one is Mini Nah. So I think there's definitely a lot of action that can happen in any of these lanes. And with TSM getting so many comfort picks, with the exception of Lulu and Flatrolls having a very strong comp, we are primed for an ex oh. Well then, let's see what happens here. Flashwells and TSM are taking to the rift for the first time here in Worlds 2017. Not the first time these two teams have played against each other and not the first they've been to Worlds, but it will be their first encounter here for this tournament. I'm really excited for this game. I'm really going to be paying close attention to both junglers and both supports. I feel like they're going to be extremely impactful in terms of how the early game plays out because typically when you look at a team like TSM, Throughout the regular season, they've been known to play more of a defensive early game style. They're much more focused and look to make more of the plays towards the mid and late game once they've gotten a few items under their belt. And I think with the composition that Flash Wolves have, they're trending towards the same kind of style. Yeah, what you're talking about here is something that TSM members during the regular season were pretty outspoken about changing their focus. Uh, people will remember this TSM roster from last year at Worlds and going into that Worlds with just absolutely very fast you know, game times, smash the region, and we're just looking to power through games, basically. But after that, you know, and after uh, the defeat there last year, TSM made a conscious choice to focus a lot more and practice on, uh, you know, coming back in games and, and winning games where something went wrong early. So that led to a lot of these longer game times and, and more sort of thoughtful mid games. And when you look at a team like Flash Wolves, they've just been so dominant within their region, especially around playoffs, that they've been able to get a lot of their leads during the early game and especially during the laning phase. And against a, a team of TSM's caliber, I feel like that they're, they're just going to have to slow things down. And especially with the way the current meta plays out and with the composition that they've drafted, we're going to see a lot of team fights later on to the game. Well, certainly a bit of action here on the bot side. Sorta and Biofrost going back and forth, but a lot of damage being done there to Bio. Sort out with that passive getting some early damage. And it is interesting talking about all these carries and just thinking that Sorta and Biofrost have done so much work for their teams. They love to get active around the map and it's uncensored this time, but you never know what can happen. Exactly. I mean we, we were talking earlier about oh yeah, Sordar and he does so much for the team and uh, he likes to create a lot of plays and, and roam around. Biofrost actually has extremely low uh, AD carry proximity as well. The lowest of, of any support at the tournament. So, uh, you know, even from his side, it's going to be a bit of a shift here. Now, everybody's just on the race to Ardent Sensor. Because first support to get Ardent Sensor, if you can get an entire back before the other support, then that can turn into a tower, a dragon, you know, and, and first rotation. And I feel like you're, you're very correct, Kobe. I think the way going to see a high priority in trying to get this early on sensor, but I also just know Sorda, and I feel that even though he's playing on this parrot, I wouldn't be surprised to see him rush early mobility boots, look to try and make a roam up mid lane, and I just feel that when you have both these supports, they're just those kind of playmaking style players. They're always trying to do something that can get their team that slight edge, which, which makes this bottom lane so exciting. I know your heart wants it, but uh, <laughs> the art and sensor draw. It's very just... true. It's very true. <laughs> well, have a quick check in actually with the items. We've seen a lot of variations on these sort of things, but gold generation there in the bot side, refillable versus biscuits for Biofrost and Sorta is a slight change, and they actually adorns blade specifically for Doublelift, and the Targon's there for Betty. But like you said, kind of the goal is just get as much gold early and rush on sensor. Yeah, I mean it's become so commonplace now, but we should continue to mention it every single time. You know the gold generations uh, items on the bottom half becoming very common here for AD carries to get those Targons. That also does provide you know extra heals in lane as they're able to get the executes and you can see the sustain is no problem for either of them down there uh, both just trying to bank up and you will also see uh, some ad carries upgrading their relic shield to to the second uh to the second part of it and the reason why they do that is because it gives additional 
base health regeneration, which against a rough lane like Tristana Luna is always extra valuable. But on top of that, it gives you that extra bit of gold towards your ally uh, because it goes up from 15 to 40. So it just makes stacking that Arden even faster. And we have been talking so much about the economy of bottom lane, uh, checking in on the runes for both of these supports. These two guys actually have not taken the gold runes. Uh, that we've seen some of the teams here at Worlds already really start to, to go with. So that gives you a little bit more combat effectiveness for your lane phase, uh, but they won't have the super inflated gold numbers that we're used to for the supports. Meanwhile, top lane there, uh, Hunter is pushing up on the Nar, so possible sneak attack from Karsa if you can get around the extra vision. Very impressive trades here for Flash Wars in particular. They're dual lane doing nicely to get damage down, but here comes Sven Skarin. Gonna try and weave through some vision. Flash fills with the ward and the pixel brush. Gonna see it, but Casa around the corner. Oh, vision plan there, and now Casa gonna spring the trap, gets him back there with the Arctic Assault for the bit of the dash, and the stun is gonna pull him across him up. MMD roaming double horns are left over. Hits the blast gun and goes back away. Sven could be safe here. Yep, Sven's gonna continue the invade because they just forced Car or Maple's recall here. You can see the Corky pushed in uh, and wants to get his base off. That's why Sven Scaren can continue this invade. They have the extra information. And the teleport now used. It's gonna be time to exit. Wave right there, so Maple able to scoop up this CS despite having to take a recall. Bjorkson 10 ahead, although Maple will catch up. As he teleports back to lane. Bjorkson though, with the last chapter now ready to go, so already building up some early lane pressure. And now Rupture lands in. Haunter though, get some damage down. One more auto needed, but can't quite proc Hyper again. And so far the laning phase going very much as we expected. TSM have three very strong laners with the Gnar, the Syndra, and the Tristana Lulu. And that's why they're starting to build these slight CS advantages, along with the slight gold advantages during the laning phase. That's right, we have about 100 gold advantage for double lift over Betty at the moment. But then there's a slight gold advantage as well for Sword Art over Biofrost down there. Uh, do the extra gold given over from the you know, Targons and it's a little bit close, but TSM slightly favored as far as the bottom lane gold right now. And when you think about TSM and again, going back to their regular season, they're not afraid to fl uh, play when they have a minor deficit. Like, usually, in the majority of their games, they're either going even or slightly behind. They don't try and force a huge amount of plays in the early game because they do prefer that defensive style of play. And the fact that they have strong laners right now and they are keeping that neutral game the way it is, this is very much a game plan and a play style that TSM is very much using. Yeah, this is what the game right now is what you get when both teams opt into the, uh, you know, focus on trying to, to farm early for the less volatile, you know, early starts here. This is group stages, the, the first game for both of these teams. And we're approaching level six here for the junglers as well. That's where you get a bit more playmaking. Currently though, TSM should be able to take away this blue no problem since Carso was in base on the Sejuani. And that will be one step towards getting Bjergsen a bit of a, an extra lead there in the mid lane. Yep, really nice team invade there. Bjergsen needs one more on Patience does grab it though. Patience doesn't quite run out. Yeah, that's what you have to watch for is the bar at the top, uh, the Patience bar. Yes, the blue buff will run very quickly, but it won't start regenerating the health until uh, it loses complete Patience. Now, we can also actually see four members move towards the bottom side of TSM's jungle. They have zero vision right now, but it feels like Double Lift and Bio, they're respecting the possibility of this map moving. Given that Paintballs, he's already missing from the middle lane, and with the vision that they've set up in the top side, they don't know where Casa is. So good respect from the bottom lane of TSM. Yeah, the communication is definitely there that it's a possible blue trade. Uh, currently, though, Flash Wolves just move in for the vision, place the wards down, and Karsa has backed off probably to get the Scuttle Crab first so that you can have that extra speed to run away to uh, you know, if things do go wrong. But having seen the extra recalls here and with all the vision, he starts it up. Collapse here onto the blue, though. Potentially, Sven is going to check this. This might not available for him, though, so... Maybe he can bluff it. Have to see. Casa should be okay with this one. Bottom lanes are roaming up, but Sven might get stunned. TP in actually from MMD. The stun He's going to land smite onto the blue buff. Bjergsen also there. Sven forced to flash out of his own jungle. Blue buff goes to Casa. I don't know about forced. Uh, he, he does flash at the end there, but a little bit jumpy. Uh, yeah. The teleport was canceled for MMD, so it turned out there was going to be an exit path, but you can tell how first game of Worlds for these teams, they do not want to give up first blood. And Sven uh, does have to blow his flash there or does end up doing it regardless. I feel like he was just showing a lot of respect to his opposition. He realized that, oh, okay, bottom lane is also roaming up. Uh, you also have the top lane TP. You don't want to run at the risk. Yeah, but now he's going for a play after blowing his flash, so it is a bit risky on the bottom side. 
Going to have to give a lot of respect to Carso once he shows. Carso still there as well. Sven snuck around the speed try and vision, but hit a control ward trying to get out of the way. So Carso still holding court here on the bottom side of the map. Certainly has rain of this area. Again, Soul Linus for TSM still looking good, but the bot lane assault's kind of mounting here for Flash World. And we should also, uh, you know, bring up the summoner spells for mid lane as the teleport was on display for Maple earlier. Bjergsen has opted for the cleanse uh, a lot because of the Sejuani. Uh, but also, you know, later stages, the Varus Ultimate is going to be something in mind. Also keeping an eye on itemization, especially between the two AD carries. That's a Berserker Screws Varus. This is a BF Sword Tristana. Probably, uh, likely that the Flash Wars bottom lane not going to be looking to go for that many early aggressive trades, especially when you have such an AD advantage over on the other side. Right, what it can also do, you know, with the extra move speed, there's a very big discrepancy between a Tristana who's trying to get the BF Sword spike, uh, so no boots at all. Even with a Lulu on your team trying to speed you up sometimes, uh, this Varus is going to have extra move speed to try and get into position to hit that ult. And we talked about the post level 6 crowd control of the bottom lane here for Flash Wolves. That's a possibility to keep your eyes on if they wanted to try and create a play. And I love the early magic resistance coming out from Maple too. You can already see he has the components towards getting himself the Hex Drinker. Still showing a lot of respect towards Bjergsen. Doesn't want to run the risk of getting bursted out again because he is running that TP. He doesn't have that defensive summoner spell. And he's just saying, all right, I know how hard Syndra can hit. And I'm just not going to, I'm going to avoid it for as long as I can. Yeah, it's no Bramble Vest, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it much better. Certainly a necessary precaution as Maple kind of zips around some vision. Bjergsen looked bot, but was spotted by a nice control or just to right of mid. Bjergsen again still kind of getting a slight CS lead here, but now going to go back and probably finish his first major item around the Nomicline. Has been the standard for a while, so should have enough money. Now, if not very soon, double if still playing up. Betty going to back off the charge and again sort of healing him up keeping him safe and kind of this bot lane parody continues now the only other thing we need to keep our eyes on is the potential swap from bot up to top but the main reason why we're likely to see that is because the early dragon on the map is the cloud and in terms of priority teams are going to be looking at that rift herald to give them that early tower advantage and when you have this pushing power of the knot already in the top side it means you can send the tristana who is great at sieging towers along with the lulu on a good push and maybe take that first tower top and very quickly transfer translated into an early Rift Herald. And it would make sense from TSM. It's about whether or not Flash Wars want to try and react to that play, or if they just want to uh, try and trade it on the other side of the bottom. Pretty incredible amount of attention being paid to this bottom lane as well. Castro and Svenskeren once again swept their way down there. But a couple wards there for Flash Wars making that a little troublesome. Still TSM holding strong in their solo lanes. Mid's okay, Bjergsen up 10, but Monster actually has a nice lane lead of 20 CS and a call ticking down, so really investing in his mid-game power. Yeah, it's worth bringing up uh, the wards that TSM have invested. You know, those control wards on the top half of the map have been there quite a while. TSM have invested several of them, and they've been moving them around a little bit, but that has allowed a lot of extra confidence here for Haunter on this matchup. Uh, as you mentioned, the coal is actually pretty close to, you know, popping there. Only 36 left for it. And we'll see if uh, the game does start to kick off after that. Now we talked about the priority on the Cloud Drake. It feels like Flash Wolves, they've got their eyes set on it. We were just talking about how TSM have all this vision invested in topside. It means the bottom is completely dark. And Flash Wolves, they're taking advantage of this. They don't have much deep vision, but they do have full control around the river. And having this bit of early game mobility will be a nice advantage. It also opens up for the possibility of maybe another strong Drake well, afterwards. First Drake looking good there for Flash Wolves. They'll happily collect the Cloud, but that slight gold advantage in bot lane actually paid off because Sword Art had the sensor for a potential fight. And Dublin is in trouble to hit out the stun after jumping out for the Trinity Corruption. It's perfect, Lulu. Barely here in time as Double Lift's trying to flash out of the way. The Buster Shot already used, and Double Lift lives through it. Yeah, and on the top side, TSM had made a movement up there, but Betty and the Flash Wolves are sticking around on this bottom turret that are trying to get the bonus gold. They don't have the minion wave to continue the push, though, and TSM, they're going to use this as an opportunity to take away some of the enemy jungle camps, but Flash Wolves, their eyes aren't getting that first tower. They went for the Drake. TSM should have been aware that Casa was in the bottom side of the map because he just, it was visible. Everyone knew that the Cloud Drake just died, and they were playing a little bit more reserved, but Flash Wolves, they make the play anyway, and they're going to get the very first tower of the game. Sort of, empowering all his teammates, looking good as Monza. Gonna get a TP out of Maple, actually. He's got the package. Haunts are about to transform, but he got the turret very low. This is an interesting call here, because both teleports are topside now. TSM are bringing three people. They could try and force. 
Might go for a play here, but Maple quite strong with two items and a Hex Drinker. Trinity Force not done, but it might not be enough. Haunter, Megan are going to threaten them off the turret, and TSM will make an eventual trade. Bot outer for top outer. Now, I like the TP up top from Maple because it avoids the risk of their top laner dying. They still have the ability to get the collapse or make the cross map play rather with MMD's TP as well. And I think that the, the whole group was very defensive and good. But the teleport didn't get them anything. They could have equally saved the top laner by just having MMD back away from the turret and seating it. The tower did go down anyways. Regardless though, Maple's going for some damage on Bjergsen. Got the packet as well. Might be able to threaten something under the tower. Bjergsen gonna have to play safe. Doesn't really have heal, just cleanses his other defensive summoner. So Maple gonna burn the package in the way, but that's Bjergsen likely forced off this turret or at least has to pop that potion. And again, the tempo continues for Flash Wars. Now on the Rift Perils, playing very fast now that Sword Art's upgraded to that first major item, but TSM looking to respond. Now bear in mind, both TPs are up, engage half. Another ulti there, Spang gonna get caught for the Wild Growth, into the Dragon, he flashed out of the way. Bjergsen looking for the stun, but doesn't quite get it. The ultimate from Tarek is gonna complete the rest of it, but the Nom down. First blood for MMD! Flash Wolves, they're the ones to start off the Rift Herald, they're the ones to start off the fight, and they're the ones to find first blood in this game. They're gonna continue it as well. The heals come through for Tarek, Ardent Sense are healing everybody up. Maple does stick around in mid lane, and he could try and collapse on a TSM as well. Hanzo was building up the Gnar Rage, but it looks like TSM might abort. Loving the confidence from Flash Wolves. They know that TSM at this point in the game should be stronger with the Syndra, with the Gnar, but they are not afraid to force these plays. They move to the Rift Herald. They feel they're in the better position, and they're able to get a collapse, and now they're the ones that are in control of the game. Yeah, enough burst there. Witch Togat's ultimate to grab first blood, but we'll watch this one again. Ben Scaren immediately gets PC. They have a good chain, and he drops off uh, an ultimate on the way out. Teleport from MMD was in a great position, though, and that flank, easy feast for him, able to stack up. And I feel like TSM, they just kind of, they split off on what their decision-making was, because we saw Maple come in from the flank, and immediately Bjergsen, Double, and Bio all turn towards Maple, which just abandoned Ben Scaren. Even though we saw a great ultimate onto Sword Art straight into three of the carries, it was not utilized or taken advantage of simply because their focus was elsewhere. And right now, the Varus with the Rage Blade completion on that single item does have you know, a pretty decent spike, whereas Double Lift went for the Shiv first, you know, for the bigger AoE, the bigger minion clear, uh, and is working on the Infinity Edge next, but it's going to take a while for the extra multiplier to come through. So Flash Wolves are feeling pretty good about their position here. Uh, the, the lead for them isn't tremendous at the moment, but they do have a good amount of control. Still a very even game in Flash Wolves. They still have their eyes on this Rift Herald. The moment that that training force is completed for Maple, I feel like they're going to feel even more confident, especially with the Righteous Glory already done and good to go for MMD as the Rift Herald starts off once more. Yep, Flash Wolves back on the objective. TSM are around to respond. Haunter and MMD cannot make it here, though, so a 4v4 at best. Okay, the. Rift Herald about to go down. Is it going to be a fight? They might actually just give it up. Herald could be dead, but that's another stun in onto the Gragas. Tarek left the ultimate. Rip and Spence Garen gets a decent bit of CC, but he's going to go down. No, not yet. Black Bolt from Carson does the kill with the kill, and now Double is forced to turn and burn out of the way, but Double so close to getting stunned. That should be it. Launches it away, gets the stun, and Carson able to grab the Double. Now Bjergsen looking for the rough chat. No, by MMD. Flash Wolf wiped TSM in that fight. This is a disaster for TSM. Once again, they walk right in into this Rift Herald, no teleport on Hanser. He's not gonna be able to join that fight. They get demolished. But what an amazing fight for Flash Wolves. Once again, they use their confidence to force the fight onto TSM. They punish the overextended Sven, and they're gonna translate this into two very swift mid lane towers and extend their gold lead to 4,000. We talked about how Flash Wolves, they were considered to be weak initially coming into Wolves, but after the last few weeks, confidence has been building. The other teams say so you have to respect this team. And once again, at an international tournament, Flash Wolves, they're here to play. Can never count out a player like Casa. Once again, snipes Sven Garen. All right, so they're gonna get the stuns here on this Sven, and he does get the ultimate from Lulu to delay this and give it some extra time, but they're still on the chase. Maple's dumping out the damage. Carson on the front line, able to get double lift cornered as well, and they clean up the AD carry afterwards. And you can see the two top lane as MMD, he gets to the fight so much sooner than uh, Hauntzer is able to, but the damage has already been done. Really want to give a shout out to Sword Art, who at the beginning of every fight, ultimates immediately. So even if TSM want to try and get a turnaround, they want to try and go for the fight, they can't do any damage, which means that Flash Wolves, they always have that confidence and they have the power to be able to come out ahead at the initial stages of the play.
two times in a row. Karsa gets the initiation onto Sven Skaren. Straight jungler versus jungler there. Able to target him right in the middle of the river, right in the same spot. And we have a pause here. Fairly tense point in the game, 19 minutes or so through. Flash was looking very good as it kind of built towards the 20 minute mark. Gold lead has grown into about 3,000 now for the team and still fighting over that Rift Arg, which has less than a minute to live. We'll see if either team can grab it. But again, you have to credit the coordination for Flash Rolls totally is a team winning those fights. But of course, the man leading the charge is Kasa and his Sejuani, which maybe we're starting to see the reasons it's been almost 100% presence this tournament. <laughs> I mean, people are well aware of the reasons for months now of Sejuani topping the charts both in solo queue uh, as well as competitive. And that combination with Tarek uh, is really on display as well because immediately as the initiation from Sword Art, uh, from uh, Karsa comes out, Sword Art is very quick to follow. Tarek ultimate is down, so they have the full confidence to chase and try and get those passive procs. But I also love the fact that Flash Rolls, they're just utilizing the strength of their composition because typically you'd expect, oh, okay, Syndra, Nah, Triss, these guys are all pretty strong in terms of the early game. If you want to try and fight this, it's going to be very difficult. But Corky, he only really needs the Sheen. And if you add a Phage in there too, he's he's going to hit a very valid power spike. The Rage Blade on the Varus as well. This is a strong AD or a strong point for the AD carry, especially when your opposition is working towards that two item spike. So Flash Rolls, they recognize they can force fights. They know that at this point in the game, they should be stronger. And TSM, rather than just concede objectives, are always trying to challenge them. And it's just Flash Rolls every single time getting the better. It does feel like at this point it is tough to win team fights given the front line that Flash Rolls are kind of built up early. Again, we do have that pause. Flash Rolls, I believe, have called for it. So we'll see if we can resolve the issue nice and quickly and pop ourselves back into the game. I think TSM may be struggling at two different points here. In the top lane, Nah, much more of a 1v1 focused sideline champion in the early game. And of course, that Black Cleaver potentially moving into another item like the Frozen Mallet for Haunter. We'll have to see on the other side for Doublelift and his Tristana. Also kind of doing the same thing where he does need a bit of lead time to really build up towards three, four items and truly unlock as a late game carry. As we move on as well, the initiation from TSM is going to be a bit more unreliable and require some more coordination. Naren and, and Gragas both uh, require some precise movements to try and pull off, so we'll see how this does develop. Flash Wolves with that healthy lead here in the mid game. Going to look to probably transition up to the top side, get that last turret that really opens up the map. Then they can start flooding through with the vision. And also just like... Going a little bit more big picture, while the game has been very Flash Wolves favored, we'll also get this opportunity to see more of the resurging picks. Number one, we're like, okay, we understand why Sejuani is picked or banned all the time, but also Tarek. I know Dash on the desk is going to be super happy about this. <laughs> he talks so much about how he thinks it's a very strong support and how when you think about the meta, everyone's like, okay, Lulu, Janna, those are the two Arden Sensor supports that really come into top tier. Karma maybe is the next tier below, but Rakan also up there. Even better when you compare it up with Azaya. But then like, oh, okay, what else can you put up there? And teams have been innovating with the Tarek. We did see it come out yesterday and had a lot of decent success. And now we see the Flash Wolves experimenting with it. And it has a surprising amount of lane power. It has a huge amount of utility in team fights, And it just makes things so awkward for the enemy team to do. Because what do you do when you do no damage to your opposition for so much time. And I think one of the big things there is, is the things that they've paired with it as well. I think you can't just shove Tarek into a team comp and hope it's going to work. But I think a lot of the comps that are being played currently in the meta do certainly suit this type of pick. And again, we know the known quantity in Sejuani. We're maybe discovering the new quantity here in Tarek. And that pairing combined with another frontliner here for MMD, Flash Wolves can just start fights without having any fear. You said it already, Vidius. The most important thing is that Sword Art is pulling the trigger instantly when the fight starts. Because if that ultimate's late, it's awful. But as soon as it happens, you saw what Sven did. He just threw out his ultimate and ran away. Because what can you do when the entire team is invulnerable? The answer is nothing. Betting <laughs> off everyone playing at home. But which it, is why it's so good. It does feel like TSM, they're struggling to find that right fight for the time being. And bear in mind, they can still scale very nicely as the game progresses. I am looking at this Tristana. And, and let's just have a look back at how this fight all played out. All right, so right in the same spot here, they get the double stuns onto Sven Skarin to start it off. He's able to get his Courage of the Colossus shield as well as Biofrost getting the shields on him. But as you see, the flash forwards, immediate chase there from the Flash Wolves, cornering double as well. Yeah, and but you really need to keep your eyes on Bjergsen in that fight as well because he only landed his stun onto Tarek. He was not able to get any real damage onto the back lane again because of the Tarek ultimate. And it felt like that he came into this fight and he's like, 
I can't do anything, and I'm just, it, it must be so frustrating to be in that situation when you're prepared and ready to fight, but then a single ability just dissuades your whole engage. It's kind of funny in that both the mid laners are actually kind of waiting to get to a point where they can combat these big tanks a little bit more. Maple hasn't even finished his Trinity Force yet, still getting to that uh, very important point for him, kind of delayed his build slightly, going for the Hex Drinker and powering up his landing sets more. And Bjergsen probably needs a Void Staff and Leanders will also be crucial, which I believe will be his next item, judging by standard Syndra builds, that he can really start to do some damage to the tanks. But until then, Tarek, Trogat, and Sejuani reign supreme at this point. Yep, just want to reiterate my theme of the reliable crowd control. The real big standout for Flash Wolves has been their use of the crowd control. Two times, locking down Sven Skarin, you know, being able to layer those CCs and those stuns, has secured them this kind of lead and enabled them so much more control. That's why, like Betty, you're talking about TSM looking a bit uncomfortable in, in their setup for a lot of these fights, and it's because of that unreliability and the uh, lack of CC that they're able to get out at the beginning. Because the ideal situation for TSM is maybe you have a Hortzer flank with the Sven Skarin engage at the same time. In that setup, unfortunately, neither top laner had the TP to join the fray, but also we're yet to see Hortzer really be one of those initiators for the team all of the reliance has been on Sven Skarin, and Flash Wolves have said, we'll engage on you before you can engage on us. This being said, TSM do have the Tristana, which is going to gain more range, and trying to get to that Infinity Edge for the real damage to start to come through. Uh, so they still have that to try and bank on, and they can try and play defensively and farm up until that point. And just a quick update again, Flash Wolves uh, asked about the lights. Apparently, you know, a bit of an issue, maybe some glare there. So making sure we get that all sorted out. The players have been uh, given permission to talk, given the pause has gone on a little longer than perhaps we'd expect. So, you know, they'll have a time to kind of talk about the point in the game for Flash Wolves. I'm sure they'll be hitting on a lot of the stuff that we've already gone through. Their game plan seems to have been executed nicely at this point for TSM. Likely talking about, okay, we know kind of where our insurance is, where our late game is going to be and where, kind of how we want to transition through this mid game and likely talking about, okay, we're behind, but not that far behind. How do we get to that point where, you know, double lift and, and the rest of TSM can take over? But it also gives us that opportunity to, to recognize that Flash Wolves is no pushover team. You know, they came in as the pool one of the group and right now they are displaying their dominance as in their debut match of the World Championship group stage. All right, well, back into the mix now is double lift and Maple squaring off there in the top lane. Again, Rift Herald still on the table for not too much longer, but looks like Flash Wolves have decided on the Drake instead. This is a potent two-man Drake team as MMD, if he wants, able to feast it away, but going to leave the job to cast it instead. And you can just see the prioritization of vision from both sides. Flash Wolves, they've got a lot of the entrances towards the Drake entirely watered up around the mid lane as well, whereas TSM, they've got their eyes set on this repairable. But I don't think Flash Wolves want to give this up without a fight. Very well could be the case. Teleport is ready once again for MMD. Might be a little too risky. Spin also has to get it again. He gets Olsen, not going to pick it up. Actually has to run out of the way. They did get the kill credit, but now Spin has to go back and get the buff. He does manage to collect it, and TSM no casualties this time. And the kill was just in the nick of time there because the Baron was coming through to kip, kick Rift Herald right out of the pit. They barely are able to get it in time and pick up the eye. Doesn't cost anything for TSM, though. They're able to walk away. And we just want to highlight as well, the thing about TSM is that even when they're at these kind of deficits, during the regular season, they demonstrated that they had a good job of being able to come back. Their mid-game decision-making, their ability to force fights, always seemed to shine as the game progressed. And it just ties back into their whole goal for the year, which was about preparing for Worlds and realizing that, hey, we might not always win the early game, but we're more confident now in our ability to turn things around later on. All right, Betty, if you're setting up comebacks here for TSM, let's look at the turret count, because that could go a long way in also bridging the gold gap. The dragons, though, are something Flash Wolves will be able to hold on to. MMD goes on to Haunter, though, in mini form. Yeah, Haunter has to do something, because this is about to be a solo kill. Flash out of the way with the hop. It's going to land on the MMD. Haunter flashes out of the way and gets the kill. Now turning on to Maple. Big enough. Great flash from Maple. Gets into the out from under him, but Haunter, such heroics there. And look at the mini map. Multiple other members of Flash Wolves were heading down there. Haunter gets the outplay on the highlight crew right there. Maple finds itself hands empty and almost gets chased out. 
Massive outplay coming in from Horns, so really punishing MMT for going in way too hard when he did not have the support of Maple. And now TSM, they're pushing down mid. This opens up the opportunity for that Rift Herald to get some of that standing gold back that we talked about in the turret. This will go a long ways for TSM, but they're not out of the woods yet. And we just talked about TSM's ability to come back. And part of the reason why they're able to do it is because of their individual performance, the star players. And usually you look at players like Jürgsen and Double, but you can never afford to underestimate may hold up in the top lane. A little bit about the build there from Hunter as well enables it. You know, you want to build flat health versus the uh, Cho'Gath for the ultimate. Yeah, you know, the Vapor Vaporal Spikes are going to do some percentage health, but Hunter had just enough to survive and then get enough rage to transform for his fight with Maple. So he barely is able to get, you know, the victory off of one fight and turn that into uh, an extra flash blown by Maple, which should probably be counted as another victory. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, Kobe. Look at all the summoner spells that we used from Flash Walls. Two flashes, both from MMD and Maple, and even the TP on cooldown for Maple, while Hornsa still has his TP up and available, which means the TSM. They've been able to pull some of that game back, but let's have a look at how this play happened. All right, so there's one of the summoners you're talking about, the teleport used at the start of it. Uh, MMD does use Righteous Glory to get into position, but he doesn't get the slow on a Hauntzer who sidesteps the Rupture, flashes over after jumping on top of Maple's head, using his teammate to be able to get over and assist for the kill. Then he forces Maple's flash there with the transformation. And flashing away from Maple was so crucial because you saw how low he was at the end of that fight. He needed to create a gap just so that Maple physically could not hit him. Now he's been able to pick up a tower and they've been able to equalize the tower score. So the, the uh, tower score has been equalized and the gold has gone to that Infinity Edge now completed for double lift. Uh, we're approaching the period in the game where TSM feels more comfortable uh, in, in these five on five team fights. The crit multipliers have come through. You know, the slow for the NAR has come through as well. But Sven is getting locked up here on the other side of this wall. Respectful flash there, McCarthy over the top, Bjorkton comes up on MMD, looking for a fast flag, a huge shade of corruption, we almost get the team, and Bjorkton, he's gonna get knocked down the wall, of course he's gonna save Miss Fence, does end up dying to cost it, Bjorkton still living for a little while longer, scatters the back in, and kills Sona, Bjorkton still alive as Horsa, about to go mega. Huge team fight going on between the two teams right now. Double lift is able to force flash walls back. It ends up being a one for one trade, and both teams walk away fairly even. You have to watch all of the extra people entering from the sides of this fight because it looked at the beginning so good for flash walls as they cornered the carries there from TSM. But both double lift and Bjergsen were able to sneak out of this one, and they answered one for one. All of the kills, by the way, notably for flash walls, are on their front line, it's on these tanks. So let's take another look at it. And just keep your eyes on the aggression from Carson, but also on the ward on your mini-map at the back. TP immediately comes in, and this is what gives Carson the confidence to go for the flash play onto Bjergsen. A great chain of corruption from Betty, tied up with the ultimate from MMT, makes you think that TSM are going to instantly lose this fight, but this is the power of Lulu, and it allows TSM to get the turnaround. Oh, and Bjergsen almost went down at the beginning, but Biofrost gets the Lulu ult on him, then he dodges there for the turnaround. Flash oh. Oh, oh, they're rushing in. Baron MMT with the ultimate. Beautiful from Flash will steal the Baron from TSM. What a quick decision from Flash Force. TSM was still resetting from the fight. They didn't have the vision in the river. For the majority of this game, they've invested vision topside, but the moment they drop it, Flash Wolves pounce and they get themselves the Baron. And the timing is so good for Flash Wolves because it's another 30 seconds left on the Drake. So TSM didn't even get to answer with the Drake as their consolation prize for this objective. Flash Wolves, Baron and Power we saw they're right back out on the map trying to push those minion waves and get the pressure reapplied. And now we've reached the mid game, Kobe. The game is just picking up in terms of pace. We talked about how there's going to be so many more fights and that's what we have left to look forward to. Flash Wolves, their eyes are now on this top tier one. They're going to round things out by taking out these final outer towers and open up the map a little bit more. Got to uh, keep a tally there on how many turrets they're able to get with the Baron buff. Looks like TSM have decided they were going to give up those turrets anyways and so they do end up going for the Drake and grab it. That does mean Flash Wolves are going to take the outer turret very quickly here. Uh, in the meanwhile, Hauntzers finds Karsa in the jungle. Don't think Haunter minds too much. Kind of built for tank busting with this build as Nara. And now with the rest of TSM hanging out on the red buff. But Kasa, very sneaky, steals the red buff. Also, another thing we, we should bring up here uh, as we're talking about these mid-game teamfights is the double Warmogs for the Flash Wolves front line. 
you know, they can afford to go in for little skirmishes like that, take a little bit uh, of damage, and then just get out of combat, fully regenerate, and keep up these sieges. Uh, we may see Flash Wolves with this more healthy front line be able to apply multiple times. Oh, Doublelift reflexes. Oh, the ultimate does get him. He rocket jumps out of the way. Cars are in a great position to try and snipe the bot laner of TSM, but Doublelift stays alive. Keep your eyes on Maple though. Remember, he has the TP and he's the one that's been sent to the bottom lane. They do not trust that the Cho'Gath can hold his own against the Gnar anymore, especially with both the Frozen Mallet and the Black Cleaver completed. So having the Corky, level 16 Trinity Force and Rapid Fire Cannon done, he's going to have a much easier time not losing his life to Monster in the side lane. Monster's still well equipped though, has a Bramble Vest and a Spectre's Cow for some early resistance as he's starting to build into that tank side. And again, as this game ramps up like you mentioned Vedius keep an eye on the carries and their builds but for now Flash Wolves still assaulting with a minute left on this Baron. Hunter has transitioned over to the mid lane as well holding those minions and Flash Wolves trying to control this red quadrant that's got a couple pesky wards. Hunter ready with the flash but doesn't need to use it. Castor actually doesn't have his ultimate right now still waiting for the cooldown to come back up and Flash Wolves just running TSM across the map trying to poke holes until one of the turrets falls down because for now they've only gotten one outer turret but looks like this siege could be good. And just note how Flash Wolves are manipulating all three waves constantly rotating oh, and again gets one but it's only caught there to the back of the team the wild burn burned for an extra knockoff as Monster did transform, but he can't make it into the back of the team. Yeah, Sven was looking for Betty there, almost got the angle, doesn't quite do it, so Betty still has both summoners available after the engagement. Very quick heal from Sorda as well to keep Caster alive, but now their eyes are on the mid tier two. The engage from TSM is unavailable. Monster is in mini form. Flash rolls, they feel very confident. Monster jumps over the wall. Maybe too much, but could be okay. Caster actually getting a little low as Maple will finish off the outer turret. Baron, but just about to wear off, so Flash Wolves Managed to find two structures and do a lot of damage to some others. Yep, able to use this Baron buff to wear down a lot of the defenses of TSM. Their frontline has healed right back up with those Warbongs, and they're thinking about continuing onto the last outer turret here on top side, but decide to leave after Baron buff expires. And again, TSM will get a chance to breathe here, but keep an eye on the farm. Double if working on that third item. Probably needs a Lost Whisper as well to really cut through this front line, but Rapid Fire Cannon should not be far away. Void Stuff also very close to Bjergsen. So as TSM kind of hit those item breakpoints, I think then they can feel more comfortable picking straight up fights. And it's not that Flash Rules can't see fight themselves, but for a lot of this mid game, these fights have been very unfair given how fed Flash Rules front line has been. Uh, I just love the engages the Flash Wolves have been setting up. It feels like it's always been on their terms, and we get to see TSM really get themselves a successful fight. We saw one go even earlier on, and that was very well played from some of the individuals on TSM's side, but they need to be the ones trying to find these fights now. We want to be seeing these flanks from Hauntzer. We want to be seeing Sven land onto those carries rather than knocking the tank into the enemy team. But you can just see these level disparities starting to build. Level 14 Karsa to 12 of Sven, 17 Mage to 15 Bjergsen and it's just because of the early lead from Kars and because Mabel can sit on a side lane that Flash Wolves are utilizing these level advantages make it even harder for TSM to really find or even win these later fights. Something else to keep track of here it's interesting to monitor the support choices with their itemization because there is this breakpoint after Arden Sensor yes everybody agrees yeah that's you know super boring and that's what you're gonna rush then we get into the interesting stuff right we have a Mikhail's now for Biofrost which we've seen already in this tournament a couple times in, in, instead of the AOE heal here for the redemption which kind of applies more Arden Sensor buffs and gets you this reset and that is good for Flash Wolves uh, for Sword Out because they have multiple 80 carries with the attack speed even benefiting Sejuani and the like. But the Mikhail's now is going to keep Double Lift even safer. And there is the extra gold that Double Lift gets to put into offensive items on the Tristana rather than having to buy a QSS for himself like Betty did. Exactly that. And also Flash Wolves, they need to think about getting themselves a locket too because it's really effective at mitigating some of the bursts that Syndra is going to be looking to throw out. And while the damage from Bjergsen is going to keep ramping up, Maple, he's no slouch either. Already level 18 and he is looking scary with the Infinity Edge now done on Flash Wolves. Good look at the gold graph there and how much damage the Baron buff was able to do. Flash Wolves, really nice pickup, uh, sneaking that one and being able to take down a bunch of turrets afterwards. Now we are 40 seconds away from Baron number two, though, and we'll see if that money is enough for Flash Wolves 
to get the second. Last strike before Elder as well as Haunter and Maple actually having a bit of a scuffle. Maple pretty strong here, but Haunter standing his ground. That throws him out as such a nuisance as MMD roams up to help his mid laner. TSM looking to get a lot of vision choked around this left side to try and force Fartros off this Baron. Yeah, TSM, they have so much pressure around the Baron area now. A limited amount of control wards in their inventory, which means that it might be a little bit harder to, to hold control. As you can see, Flash Wars, they just walk in. And Double Lift, he's on his way back on a ward two. I feel like we're setting up for a very close fight right now. There's almost enough gold for just Last Whisper, and Gerksen has three items. So I think Double Lift really wants to go back before this team fight starts. Unfortunately for him, I don't think he has He's going to lose the Baron if he does. There's a Joe Gath, man. Also, watch out there. Maple does have the package, and Flash Wolves have the inside track on mid lane. They can try and pressure these minions and force TSM to come at them. Once it's not about building up as well. A fight is primed here as a huge stack in the bot side has also been prepared by Flashwells. TSM need to make a decision quickly. Well, you can see what they're doing. Bjergsen and Doublelift went for the minions, and they kind of cut off the reinforcements, this fly line for Flash Wolves. So now we're just left with a bunch of champions here middling around this brush as we see them both drop control wards into it to try and take it. Package is worn off as well, and Haunter needs to rebuild his rage as he dips below 50%. A very tense back and forth, but again, the side lane still winning in the bot lane for Flash Wolves. One of the big differences, too, is that the, AD, oh, the stun does land. One of the big differences is that rapid fire cannon built for double lift. Every time he's able to walk around and charge that one up, then he gets this extra long range shot to go for some harassment on Flash Wolves. Problem again, though, those Warmogs heal the front line right back up. Arden Center now on the Baron. Yep, Haunter forced the TP. He went to enter that side lane, but Flash will start the Baron up again. They're going to stay in the pit, maybe a little too long, but now pulling away after burning Haunter's teleport. Exactly that, Pastry. Flash was all they wanted was the side lane TP from Haunter. Flash Wolves now have two teleports themselves. They can maybe send someone off onto the side and start applying, or they can just continue to hang around the Baron as they started off once more. Might as well go for it here. Vision in the pit there, but this Baron dies so quick. Quickly for the flash roll. TSM looking for its best. Gets stunned up with a Mikhail from Bifrost. It's beautiful. Big stuns in the backside there. For the ult from Tarek Burton, the fight resets. Sword Art uses the redemption and Flash will back off the Baron. Fantastic stun from Bjergsen. The man in the mid lane coming up clutch as Flash Wolves are the ones in control. Oh, Maple. Now TP on the bottom lane. They're going to race though. Double is going to push down this turret while Maple is going for the inhibitor turret. Maple should be able to get this. The wave is there, but TSM needs to get back. Three caught in the mid lane as MMD pops the righteous glory. He's got the stone plate. Maple gets the bot side turret. TSM scattered here. Flash. Flash Wolves want to stop these back so that Maple can actually get the inhibitor turret, but Haunter got his off. But the moment Haunter goes back, that's when Flash Wolves now go, we want to now start off the Baron. You've only got three members. Double of desperately wants to back to buy, and Flash Wolves are back on the Baron. Double has 2,000 gold sitting in his inventory. TSM just cannot make Flash Wolves take their foot off the pedal. Again, they back off the Baron after a faint Haunter. Forced to walk from bot lane to mid lane just to make sure nothing goes wrong, and finally, it feels like Flashers will give it up for now. There's still a giant minion wave in the bottom lane for Flash Wolves. Double lift purchases and is able to go clean it up now. And finally got his last whisper. Meanwhile, Hauntzer on that mountain drake to even them up. One cloud, one mountain apiece. And things are getting intense, boys. Sigh of relief for many TSM fans as TSM are able to hold off the siege from Flash Wolves onto the Baron. They still hold on to a very healthy gold lead. They are the ones that are still dictating the pace of this game, and they've been able to shop themselves, pick up a couple of extra items. The third stone plate now sitting in the inventory of Flash Wolves as Sword Art picks that one up, but I still want to see that locket. Oh, oh there it is, Kasa working towards it. Going to make things so much harder for TSM in these later game fights. The stone plates here are all built up for Flash Wolves. You have to watch out for those activations. It's huge, which uh, they can turn the team fights. Now, you have to also worry, though, don't stack those up with your Taric ultimate, because TSM, oh, yeah. they're able to kite out those cooldowns. Then they would have a pretty big advantage with the re Another fight, Taric Corrupt has massive spent Garrett. Gets there while the ult is Maple looks for the flank. Double if going to force him away, but Haunter looking to go mega. Well, Haunter has a lot of control here, gets the slows onto MMD. Stun hits one, that's MMD. Could be going down the stone plate. He's getting a pop, Taric Ultimate. He's going to try and save the fight, finally. Drops down and Haunter, he's just run out of health. Gets away with the wild growth of Kasa. Flashes forward as they're trying to take down the front line. TSM just maybe have enough. Kasa goes down the double lift. A little bit too deep there for the front line. They both 
the stone plates run out for Flash Wolves, and Double Left is able to find the crit. What an insane fight, though. Only one member goes down, and it is TSM that finally find the kill. Double Lift is hitting this late game point. TSM know they can rely on this man to carry, and the pressure is mounting as he is doing so much work to help TSM in these later stages. A lot of credit to Haunter, too, in this game. Being able to use the speed differential here on this champion is huge, and he's able to balance that Gnar Rage. But Flash Wolves are still in the lead. They have the extra gold. See if they can actually bring that to Brunt around this bear. TSM are starting it up. Here come the Wolves! Double it again, so much unspent gold, but TSM are forcing onto this Barret. They're burning it down, but MMD, no Flash can't get in the pit. Maple maybe can move in to look for a steal, but Old Bjergsen does take down the Baron. TSM get the objective. Great decision making from TSM, knowing that the jungler was down, there was no smite available for the Flash Wolves. They only had four members and were not confident to go for the fight, and now the momentum is swinging back in the favor of TSM, and it all starts here. Yeah, look at this big rupture. Uh, he sees it, and he goes straight for Bjergsen. The cleanse gets them out in time, though, and they're able to reset, basically. Sven used his ultimate to delay, and then this is the highlight we're talking about, where constantly Haunter is able to use the speed differential there on Gnar. He goes for the re engagement. Stoneplate buys him enough time for MMD to survive for the Terran ultimate to come down, but he still can't re-enter the fight. And there's the big mistake from Kasa, flashing into multiple members, thinking that the team was there to support him, but they couldn't get into position to properly help because of the narrow choke point. Yeah, he wanted to get that execute, right? There were multiple low health members, but he's on the Sejuani. All he can do is apply uh, stuns and slows. He doesn't have the damage in his kit. Has to have the backup right behind him. Meanwhile, he's flashing into the DPS members of TSM. Double F gets to unload. Bjergsen gets to unload, and they were able to come out with that kill. Now, Baron buff in their hands. Looking to try and siege up here in the mid lane turret. It's gonna fall down. TSM could grab the first inhib of this game. Double F is so strong. Having spent all that gold, Mortal Reminder done. QSS for himself also there, and TSM cracked the mid lane. TSM feeling very confident right now. This was the comeback potential. We talked about the late game strength that their composition does have. All they needed to do was find that good fight. And they were successfully able to find it against the Flash Wars. And now the pressure is on the right Elements again. representatives. Gold lead starting to shrink and become pretty irrelevant as we push late into the game. Horns are again looking for the flank as TSM take turret number six to even up the score. Soon Super Minions will be streaming down the mid lane as well, but TSM have got a minute 30 left with Baron, and they're going to try and do as much damage as possible. Double it again, Kasa gets himself stunned. Double it gets himself out of the way as Kasa lets the ulti rip. MMD there is a redemption. He's going to try and reset it off to Burton Lloyd, but not dead as a Tarek ultimate. But defensively, oh, it's a My God, a five man Nar ultimate. He's going to secure the team by win. MMD down. As TSM move forward, Sorta getting taken down by Double Lift. He barely is, but Honsa, what a massive play! What a machine Honsa is! He comes to the World Championship, he has an amazing performance. A five-man Nar Ultimate could lead TSM to their first victory at Worlds. ETP's back in, TSM are gonna go for it now. Flash Wolves, they fought so well to try and keep this game up, and Kasa is gonna try and keep the boat afloat. Sword Art low, Double Lift just does too much. Polymorph there, beautiful. Full by Biofrost as Kasa leaps in, but TSM, they cannot finish yet. They wanted to end it, but the health bar is getting too low, and TSM will have to recall to refill those bars. That will give Flash Wolves another chance. MMD gets back up, but man, this momentum is completely in TSM's favor. Oh my word, that that Haunts ultimate was insane. We talked so much about how Tarek's ultimate mitigates uh, the pressure, the, the ability to force an engage, but, but not to hold so. So tightable. TSM back off during the duration and gets the perfect re-engage there. Not only was he great in those team fights, remember the 1v1, 1v2 outplays that he was able to pull off in this game. We'll see if it's enough, though. TSM have the flash rolls on the rope. Not done yet. Elder Dragon up in 30 seconds. Baron Buff has worn off all five members of TSM. Double lift has finished his last, his final build. Bjergsen has a death cap now completed with an extra needlessly large rod. And this is likely going to be our final team fight of the game. Got to put yourselves in Flash Wolves' shoes. Their backs are against the walls, but they do have some control wards around the river here for this dragon. They want to find an unsuspecting member of TSM walking through Fog of War. They try Sven Scarin, but he's a bit tankier now than he used to be. 
And they go all in. They know they have to try and do something on the Elder Dragon, but Haunts are positioned for a massive flank once more. Needs some rage, hops into the pit. Double is going to force MMD out of the way, and Haunts are regrouped with his team, but the Elder Dragon still engaged, done. Hits MMD. And the time is on TSM's side. The minions are moving into the Flash Wolves base, so the Flash Wolves feeling the pressure. You can see it on all three lanes. In the mid, it has been pushed up, but those super minions are starting to stack. Bot and top. TSM, they're the ones that control the pace right now, but Corky has gone back. He has the TP to join the fray, but TSM, they're looking to start this Elder. Elder again resets, but TSM make it grumpy once more. What they want to do here is get the teleport out. Haunter's actually moving bottom lane. They're going to be able to get the turret here. Will they actually compete with the dragon? Going back in again, double lift again, forcing them away as Flash Rules engage the dragon. Haunts are a long way away from his team at this point, but the Drake resets. Haunts are again looking for a flank, 50% raid. Jumps in with a boomerang spin. Maybe try something. Haunts are leaps in again. Slow does not land as they try and follow. Flash Wolves just doing their best to disengage. Let's see if TSM oh, will come in. Betty, beautiful ultimate to stop TSM. TP for Maple, though now burn. He tried to flank the fight. TSM immediately returned back to the Elder Dragon here. Now that there's no teleport on Maple, he's going to have to join all or nothing. And again, TSM playing patient back into the Elder Dragon. Haunter and Spence taking it up. Haunter about to get tied off. Finds doubly, but a QSS out as he rocket jumps away. Haunter is exhausted right now. Odd oh, Nar won't be able to transform if they force the fight right now. But Maple's still in the mid lane, so it looks like they're going to give up this dragon. MMD can't get into the pit, so TSM grab themselves the Elder Dragon. They're going to start storming towards the Flash Wolves base. Flash Wolves could not deal with the pressure, and they didn't want to take the risk. Maple, he used the teleport behind TSM, but Flash Wolves, they could go for the re-engage. They knew that TSM was far too strong, and that means that TSM, they're going to get themselves another tower and work towards that third and hit. TSM did a good job of biding their time, waiting for their AD carry strengths with the extra range, the crit multipliers coming through, to play the later game team fights using Haunter to split push. Now he's with the rest of the team and the rage is building up. Double it again. So much confidence in himself. In the face of Flash Rules frontline, Rocket jumps to safety. One in here back up. It's just me, but TSM are playing with fire. The best hope that Flash Rules have right now is that the ultimate from Sinjuani comes up before the Mercurial Scimitar. Note as well that the defensive item from Biofrost still on cooldown too. If they ever want to catch a uh, double lift, this is going to be their best opportunity. But even then, you have to get through the Lulu and you have to get th through the barrier of double. And they don't have many more minion waves to make their choice here. Top and mid are actually moving in. TSM, here we go! Sneaky ultimate fight back! Raptor and MMT to the fire! Does go down, spin! Get permafrost time, but it's still 4v5 MMD. We're gonna find the Raptors, but TSM happy to keep fighting. Huge kill there for Flash Wolves. Gonna buy them a little bit of time. The minions will be a problem for them, but that might have done it. They've been able to buy time, slow down the pressure from TSM. With Biofrost dead, it does mean that the defensive capabilities that TSM have dropped, but the damage is still there. TSM, they don't want to take the gamble, and Flash Wolves, they find the miracle play. Oof, we saw it yesterday. Sometimes the best choice is to thread the needle and go for the support, because that is one that actually has low enough health to burst down. Flash Wolf did get it. And now we have another Baron oh my word. Here we ready go. to set up. Yeah, all of this action on the bot side made me forget that Baron is now back alive. Flash Wolves looking to take it down. Maple going over. Haunter sticking bot side with the pressure. Has the TP, but Flash Wolves don't pull the trigger just yet. We have to re-emphasize how big of a hold that was for Flash Wolves. Both inhibitors have respawned. They're rushing in, they're rushing Fire in. Fire Frost is blocking it. This could be a 50-50. Kragas goes in. Kassa to kill us the Baron with his mind for the team, but still there, Spence. He gets jumped down. And they're still chasing. A lot of damage done, but the Baron does go to Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves, it's huge. They're able to get the extra kill there. They land the Baron secure as well. What an amazing game between Flash Wolves and TSM. The number one representatives from the LMS versus the number one representative from North America. Constantly butting heads, constantly trying to prove that they're the ones coming out on top. This was supposed to be the group of life, gents, but right now these guys are bloodthirsty and they want to be the ones to get that first win. All right, Baron now three minutes on Flash Wolves. Elder Dragon spawning. Not quite yet, has a number of minutes, so that's still available, but Flash is going to try and take some inhibitors of their own. Ball back in their court. They're going to try and force down TSM's pace. Remember, bot inhib is still open, but right now they're looking mid. 
Double lift on the front lines here, trying to clear out the minions before they get into the TSM base. Full damage on Maple as well, rounding things out with a Phantom Dancer. His eyes are just dealing as much damage to the front line as possible because that's all this is. Whoever kills the tank first wins. And so far, Doublelift has been one of the big damage dealers just shredding through MMD and Casa. But Betty and Maple are no slouches either. They're looking to do the same as Flash Wolves uh, got their eyes on this inhibitor. Keep your eyes on these big ultimates. The disengage from Sven could negate a lot of the time from the Terrick ultimate. Here it comes. Uh, Terrick ultimate in, but Betty actually no, knocked up just enough for the ultimate. What's good from Gragas? Doublelift trying to cut it out of the way. But Hold with the blade of the Royal King that he just got. He's trying to fight it out. Sven though dies again to Maple and TSM forced to play 4v5. That's one of the big tanks gone now for TSM. Flash Wars are feeling confident. The Warmogs will regenerate these tanks for Flash Wars and they still have the Baron. Timely ultimate there. Tarek ultimate definitely saved Betty inside the base. Here comes the teleport. They're pushing through. Flash Wars gonna try and seal the deal. As Caster taking some heat, but again, tank easy moves back in Horsa. Forced to watch out. The permafrost does land, but. He gets out safely, turret down though. Remember the bot lane inhibit still exposed. Flash Wars, they could just very quickly rotate down, but their eyes are on the top. There's 28 seconds left on Sven Scarret for the Gragas to get back up. Flash Wolves can take the outer turret, but the inhibitors will be difficult. On the dip bot, but he immediately reroutes top when he sees where the Flash Wolves are going. Carter again looks for Bjorks and does find it, but the cleanse is off. Oh, oh it's vulnerable! Going to be Bjorks, but he actually's forced out of the way. Not sure what's getting him back, but the turret does go down still. Honza chasing with the MMD, gets knocked up by the rush shot. Sven Scarret's back on his feet, so Flash Wolves barely do not get the inhibitor. There's two left. They're going to use the Baron Empowered Recalls to reset this one. Cannot believe that Bjergsen was able to survive that engagement. What a play from Maple. This guy, right at the end, he's like, I have to make this, I have to go. I just have to go into the back line. He has the ultimate from Sword Art. But Flash Wolves, they're not done yet. They've got their eyes on this in here. Seek attack, they return to it! Yeah, nice fake there from Flash Wolves. They will get the inhibitors. They gotta run, they gotta run! TSM are forcing the fight, they know they have to go. MMD forced to flash out of the way. Honza can't slow anybody else down. Sven ready with the flash, but the carries still feeling safe. And Flash Wolves successfully steal the inhib and get away. MMD though, maybe not so lucky. Honza in the promo still going! Trader Grimes are gonna turn it back around. Tarek Ultimate still there as Honza gets himself out of the way. Redemption misses everyone. Flash Wolves get out. Oh my goodness, this Tarek ultimate is always off cooldown. <laughs> Late game here, level 16 with max cooldown reduction and an oak record to boot. He's saving people left and right. Less than a minute, 55 seconds. Okay, so let's see. This is one of the fights from, from about five minutes ago now. <laughs> Ulti onto Bjergs and immediate cleanse. But that ultimate here from Sword Art, the magnificent. Yep, and Karak Ultimate comes down and buys a lot of time for the front line, as well as Betty, who was knocked in. They turn it around and get the kill onto Sven Skarin. That was a long time ago, though, when the extra inhibitors were standing. Now, Flash Wolves have a two inhibitor lead on TSM. Almost 50 minutes into the game, though, it's all about the setup for these fights. They literally flipped it onto TSM. TSM were the ones that had two inhibitors down. They had their eyes on the Nexus, and then Flash Wolves were able to just barely get that base defense. They then found that pick onto Biofrost, which allowed to give them the Baron, and now they're the ones with their eyes on that third and final inhibitor. But remember that one big fight will give the game win to TSM. There is very little left of the base of Flash. Or the game to Flash Wolf. One that fight too, is all yeah, it needs. That's all it needs. It, it's, it's literally on a knife's edge right now as to who will take this game. It was even the same inhibitors, Betty. I says, look at the roller coaster we have been on for the first game of day two. Teleport is ready for Hanser, who just transformed in the top side. Flash Wolves could wait out this transformation from Nar. Wait till he returns to Mini and goes exhausted, but they're actually starting it out on Sven right now. Hanser back into the front line. MMD taking a lot of heat. As Hanser tired, moves back in. He's going to try and force them out and just tag people with slows, but Flash Wolves still not done. Now it's DSM that have to worry about timings and have to worry about the extra minions flooding into their base while they try and defend this five-man squad. But now gold means very little. Pretty much everyone is at full build. Even the supports have completed all of their itemizations. Full on utility from another tank on the side of Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves, they have their eyes on this inhibitor and TSM. They're doing a pretty good job of defending. The Haunts' pressure is being split all across the base. There's two groups of super minions now inside the TSM base. Look, they're hitting on Go the. 
going in for it now. The Redemption gonna reset it all. Honta now, Mega Casa leaps in, but Honta needs to find the angle. TSM trying to defend their face. Whoa! It's Casa! He's gonna go down! Stop by Bjork to double it! Finds the kill! 5v4 now for TSM! They were able to get the kill, and now they bought themselves time to clear out minion waves. Similar story here. But remember, that's a 60 second death timer on top of Casa right now. TSM, there is very little standing in their way. All they need is Wonsa to defend, and they can just look to end the game. In addition, Baron comes up in 35 seconds. That oh is longer word. than the Karsa death timer here. There will be no jungle for Flash Wolves, but TSM are already at Flash Wolves' base. They gonna run towards the him. I think they're just gonna go for it here. Minion Wave not quite there just yet. In fact, I won't be there in time. Minion Hib under threat, but MMD's gonna make it back. Maple does so much damage. Haunter is forced to TP and TSM are gonna keep going. Yeah, they spread themselves a little bit thin, but they want this inhibitor. Double it does so much damage as Maple just eats it. Haunter does take the inhib down. And now they can retreat to the Baron. 18 seconds left on Karsa. This is going to be so big. It's hard for Flash Wolves to run through this fog of war. If you close the map off, they're teleporting into the base. They have two TPs. They might just drive a TSM. Get to try and take the Baron Maple. He's the one down the bottom side of Bjergsen. Instantly goes back to Baron. He's going to get burnt down. TSM do get it. Now needs a Baron recall back. Maple is trying to go for the game. That's going to be three inhibitors here. Flash Wolves are going to get double super minions in every single line. Amazing decision making from the flash rules tsm they had control of the ban they were guaranteed to get it and flash rules had to make the split second decision but the now tsm will defend with baron buff six super minions trying to make their way towards the base elder dragon on the table they get the knockout they can't maybe spin double is still going in the ultimate there as he body slams out of the way Old burn from Tarek. Flash was not going to have the cooldown of TSM. Look to re-engage. They're trying to make use of this 30 seconds. The Elder Dragon is up and available to force. No team has long MMDC with his own TP as well. Watch the super minions as they move towards Maple. He's actually just cutting mid lane. TSM, you can have the Elder Dragon. Maple wants the game. No, he does faint back towards the team. There is no ultimate from Cho'Gath available. He can't steal it, but Karsa could try and go for a smite. Karsa, can he get in range? He's got the flash, not gonna get it. Spen able to secure it. Redemption was looking for it. As Maple forced to burn the package, Honda looks for the solid flash. It's in, Benny, and then foul by Dublin. That's a kill, TSM, find one. That's a carry, dead is now Flash Wolves grouped up. Get knocked back in, MMD moved back into the team. He's dead as well. That's gonna be TSM with the Elder Dragon pushing into the base. But look at Maple once again. He's trying to get the back line, but I don't think about it. It's TSM, they've got their eyes on the game. Race is on, one knocks his tower up for Flash Wolves. Maple, he's gonna try it here, a sort of looks to delay. Redemption down for TSM as Castle also in the mix for the turret. He's down the Nexus exposed and TSM win the thrill game here at Worlds. The size of relief on TSM. What a hard fought 54 minute game. It could have gone either way, but North America, they get the win. Look at that celebration from DSM and Double Lift specifically finding the AD carry at the end. You can see Double Lift, they're holding his hands tight. They were shaking as that game finished. A slugfest, 54 minutes as the teams will shake hands for the first time here in Wells 2017. A few hugs and smiles exchanged. If that's the first game for these two teams, <laughs> We have a lot in store for this group. What a way to start day two. Flash Wolves did a good job forcing early on, making use of their slightly earlier single item power spikes and getting the lead on TSM. But it wasn't enough. 54 minutes we had to wait. Not sure how many inhibitors <laughs> went down. I was going to go with like nine uh, <laughs> were killed in this one. Like four Barons too. It was it was a crazy game. What an amazing game. And, and it all came down at the very end as well to how they were able to finally siege onto the base turrets. Because remember, TSM nearly lost when they were the ones trying to siege to get that final inhib down. And then it was Flash Wolves trying to do exactly the same play. And then it was the jungler that ends up going down. And he's way more important than the support because without the smite, you can't challenge the Barons. And once TSM got that, it was just about patience waiting for that slight opportunity where they were able to find it onto the enemy AD carry and eventually win out the game.
We knew they were good in deficits, but I did not expect <laughs> exactly that game to start TSM's world campaign. Absolutely absurd. And again, credit to Horn. So this is a man that has been so confident, so eager to prove himself on an international stage and Honsa, welcome to Worlds buddy that was quite the kickoff. <laughs> Definitely was, I mean in the side lane the early on 1v2 outplay for him then the team fighting prowess really showed through. Well we'll see what happens here as we are going to move over, TSM has started the group stage with a win so let's send it over to Dash and the analysts for a closer look. Thank you very much. Pastry time, a 54-minute brawl where TSM comes out on top over the flash rolls. What a way to start day two. I mean, you start that game off as a TSM fan, you're sweating bullets because Ooh. flash rolls look good, but it looked like it was last year's flash rolls. Yeah. What happened in closing out a game? And it was last year's TSM for a lot of it as well because one of my biggest criticisms about them on the international stage is they are playing not to lose rather than playing to win. And we were like, What's up with the tempo of TSM early? They're overly safe, avoiding turret dives. They're not trying to make any initiations. And it looked like it was going to cost them the game and probably should have. But it's pretty good that they didn't since I said NA was going to 3 They're going to be so <laughs> yeah, yeah, glad. Yeah. Jack collectively will breathe a sigh of relief along with everybody else over in NA as TSM comes out on top. But let's talk about this early game crafted by the Flash Wolves. Total control dictating the pace of the game around all of the global objectives. Turrets, uh, dragons, rift heralds. And this particular rift herald play, firstly the teleport coming from MMD. The communication from Flash Wolves was very sound. They knew very clearly where they wanted to be and when they wanted to be there. And the weirdest thing about all of this is the Heralds were timed with TSM having item spikes, not the Flash Wolves, but they still had the confidence to make the plays, take these aggressive decisions. One of the first aggressive plays of the game. The plays came out of the complete control of Vision, as you were saying, inside the pit, but I'm a little disappointed with Sven Skaren going for the same move twice mm -hmm. at 1.5 out of the eight deaths of TSM, and they are really lucky that they got this win. It's going to have huge implications for how this group is going to pan out. Yeah, there was a large portion of that game where Sven Skaren was the same level as Sword Art. He was a support that was trying to make engages, which is uh, a huge difficulty that TSM had to overcome. I mean, Pastry threw props over to Hanser for his play in this game. We saw the individual outplay in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. The bigger play coming here near the end, the five-man gnarl. This is your Acer Predator replay. Yeah, we almost thought this was going to end the game, specifically waiting until exactly the moment when the Taric ultimate wears off. Gets just a massive NAR ultimate, but the rupture hitting Doublelift and Bjergsen prevented the absolute follow through coming instantly for TSM. This is what I wanted to see out of TSM's early game, because you know that they wanted to put Hanser into a big role to carry. This is what he can do when he gets ahead. Imagine if he was even more fed a little bit sooner, he would have just blown this game wide open. I mean, yeah. last year he had a lot of talk around the way he wanted to perform on the international stage. He didn't measure up to that talk last year. Well, hey, this entirety of TSM season has been about reorienting towards international competition. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic way for him to be starting his tournament here at Worlds. And it feels like TSM wanted him to do that as well. A lot of the draft and their early game strategy, whether it was risk averse or not, felt like they were in a way giving him space letting him be Nara into the Cho'Gath. There was a solo kill in the bottom lane, almost a 1v2 from him as well. And Hornsa did have a standout game, and I feel like that's because TSM said do it. They, they support him in doing it. Now, you, you look at that replay, you see a five-man Nar ult in the opposing team's base, and you'd figure, well, that's <laughs> got to be where the game ended, right? No, heck no. The game went on for like 20 minutes more mm -hmm. until we end up around the Elder Drake. Here, TSM finds the pick onto Betty. Double lift leading the charge. This will be your game winning team fight. Let's take another look. Yeah, so much of this game was about trying to cut through stone plate tanks and with these very slow drawn out team fights. But the instant he sees Betty is taking a path different than the rest of his team, Double lift goes directly for him. They match Mercurial Scimitars for the move speed. Fire Frost helps him in at the end there. And this gets a little crazier from here. Even. And it gets so hard for the Flashles to actually contest Double lift because early on, the range is fine against Tristana. But the later she goes, she gets so difficult to reach between Rupture, between Sidrani, and Tark has no chance of even connecting onto her. And you can just see the gold graph of what was going on in this game. Flash Wolves could have ended this game, but TSM clawed their way back. I find it fascinating to look at those damage numbers and to mm -hmm. see that TSM actually has fewer kills at the end of the game than the Flash Wolves have when they clearly dealt far yeah. more damage overall. Uh, Shogat? Sejuani? <laughs> Warmogs? Warmogs? Stoneplate? <laughs> those are huge numbers, right? So uh, when looking at Hanser's DPM numbers for the rest of the tournament, remember this game happened where he had 950 smacking a Cho'Gath all game. All right, well, there you have it. TSM comes out on top in their first game against the Flash Wolves.
I want to know from you guys, though, for Flash Wolves, how they reset themselves, right? Because you mentioned the fact that this game should have been won by them with the lead that they had built for themselves. That's going to be a crushing from a mentality standpoint to lose this game on day one for them. Yeah, I want to emphasize that it is game one of six, and if you win out after losing the first game, you're still first in the group no matter what. So there is so much still to play, and this is the group that does not have the Korean team, and there is so much on the line for that first seed. So I think they can absolutely bounce back, but they need to have more commitment to making the play. There were even moments during the game where they hesitated for two seconds on a Baron call, or they were a little bit slow on a teleport. That can't happen when they have the idea of a play. Just make it, man. They're yeah. in the lead most of the time. They have individual commitment when Maple decides to TP and go for the inhibitor play Teleports when the Baron goes in. That was an amazing play. But as a team, they're really struggling to have everybody on the same page 30 minutes into the game to say, hey, this is how we're going to march in and take the victory. But what they do have is a lot of positives from a game like that. Even though they lost, maybe the indecision's still going to haunt them. There's still so many positives that they can look at at least promoting further through at least draft even in their coming mm -hmm. games up. Well, for more on that game, let's go ahead and check in with Shox, who's standing by with TSM's AD Carey. Thank you very much, guys, here with uh, Double Lift. Very intense game. The analyst desk was talking about it a lot and how the flash rolls kind of lost the initiative at some point in the game, but it was one to come back from for you guys. So can you walk me through how you got back in the game and what the most important factor in those late game team fights was? Uh, well, when we got really far behind early game, we did a lot of prep about flash rolls and their habits and like the way they want to use Baron and the way they play when they have a lead. So I think we we're just really good at anticipating their next play and then always trying to get a trade or stalling out their, their play because Kind of like our biggest mistakes before was when the enemy team got a lead, we would just keep fighting because we were a notoriously good team fighting team. But at Worlds, like we're still a really good team fighting team, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't just smash our heads into them and hope to win. So we had to play a lot more cautious and stall the game out until we got like item spikes. So with Trist, if, as soon as I get like four items, I can one v five. So we were kind of just playing for that. I like that you mentioned the fact that that's something that you specifically worked for and that, that one was one of your weaknesses beforehand because we're looking at this roster. You guys are coming back with an unchanged roster. Obviously, you took a break in spring, but do you feel like you guys have matured enough to take that extra step now this year? Yeah, I think for sure we've matured a lot. Last, last Worlds, I was playing really bad, and I think everyone on the team just, we didn't have the right team mentality. And we, were, we thought we were super hot coming off of winning NA and like that Worlds, World's teams wouldn't be that much considerably better than NA teams. I mean, other than the Koreans, obviously. But um, this Worlds, we treat every team with a lot of respect. Every team in our group, even though we're supposed to be like, I don't know, we're supposed to be a strong team within our group, we put a lot of respect to the, our opponents. And I think taking that humble attitude, we've been learning a lot in the last month. Yeah, well, a game like this must be good then because you went through a lot of emotions and scenarios in it. And you talk about being more humble and maybe not as overconfident, but the community and other players have been throwing you guys a lot of hype, obviously. Gorilla said yesterday that you're such an amazing player, a god on the rift. So how are you keeping calm under all that? Uh, I think I've just been playing well in practice and other teams, maybe like they want to praise us and, and overhype any teams as usual. But I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't get to any of our heads. And I don't think we're, I don't think like we're the kind of team anymore to listen to that and be like, yeah, we're the shit, you know, we're so good. But I think we're more like super cautious and just thinking, oh wow, we have a lot of expectations to live up to. Like we better, we better meet those expectations or else the fans are gonna be really sad. Well, that's very happy to hear that. Um, I'm not gonna let you go without a little bit of possible trash talk. IMT Fnatic later, the big EU NA matchup. What do you think, Double Lift? Uh, I think IMT is gonna smash Fnatic. Right, we'll see. Well, we have one game coming up before that, a fantastic battle between Team WE and Misfits Gaming. So that'll be right back after the break. Yoke looks for the summon, doesn't quite get it. The ultimate from Tarek is going to complete the rest of it, but the nom down. First blood for MMD. Up Yoke said, looking for the rush, and not by MMD. Flash Wolf wiped TSM in that fight. MMD goes on to Hunter, though, in mini form. Yeah, Hunter has to know something done, because this is about to be a solo kill. Flash out of the way over the hump. It's going to land on the MMD. Hunter puts down the way and gets the kill. Now turning on the Maple. I have a good here. I'm going, I'm going. We can bite, we can bite. Go. Push the target, push the target. This could be a 50 50. Crack is going in. Casa.
If you want to follow the best of the Rift, then you need T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. We doubled our coverage so you can stream worlds in more places than ever before. With T-Mobile, don't miss a moment from the first battle all the way to the lifting of the Summoner's Cup. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network.